perhaps uh, instead of this traditional law and order approach to drugs uh, it is time uh, to think of another alternative approach let's talk to uh, QC barrister and author Chris Dorr good evening Chris good evening uh, you've written a book called uh, Justice on Trial, Radical Solutions for a System at Breaking Point, uh, which is obviously about the problems we have actually just dealing with crime in terms of the court system. Uh, but uh, do you think it's time for radical solutions in terms of our drug problem? Because, you know, all Boris has done now is declare war on drugs. The war on drugs has been going on for 17 years. And uh, here's the news. Uh, drugs has always won it and it's, carry it's still winning it and it always will win it. So so nothing he said here is really going to be particularly effective, is it? Well, it's interesting, Kevin, that you mentioned the history of all of this, because I was just looking back at something, very famous press conference held by President Richard Nixon uh, exactly 50 years ago, in which he declared the war on drugs, uh, and he declared drugs to be public enemy number one, which needed a massive crackdown of the federal government, uh, and since then, the U.S. government has spent one trillion dollars, one trillion dollars on this war on drugs. Uh, and anybody that knows anything about the United States, and you rightly point out that I've written extensively about this in my book and toured all over the United States looking at the impact of that war on drugs in, in, in preparing to write the book. Anybody who knows anything about it knows that the United States has the worst drug problem it's ever had after spending that completely pointless trillion dollars. And all we've got now is, it, frankly, a faint echo of Richard Nixon in, in even less eloquent and even less sensible form than that utterly discredited uh, U.S. president of 50 years ago. Well, and also, uh, if you take um, uh, Boris Johnson, uh, his new war, uh, which I, th I fear, I mean, I'm not against... Uh, his instincts that he wants to uh, somehow or other help uh, us cure the scourge of drugs. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, but uh, his method of going about it just isn't going to work because it's the same method they've always used in the failed war against drugs. Oh, we're going to go after the dealers. We're going to go after the suppliers. And we're also going to go for the people who use drugs because, you know, they're the people who create the demand. You know, and, and you had Kit Malthouse yesterday talking very proudly about how he's going to send sniffer dogs dog patrols outside Sloan Square Station in Chelsea because that's where a lot of well-heeled professionals, middle class people walk around possibly with wraps of cocaine in their pocket. So you get a barrister, not you of course, or a doctor or someone, a banker with a wrap of cocaine in their pocket caught by a dog and then you take away his passport or his driving license. I mean, so what? So what? Well, the, the only so what actually is, is just so how catastrophically damaging that sort of policy is, because it completely fails to address the reality of drugs and the problems that are associated with drugs, all of which, all of which are caused by prohibition and law enforcement. Yeah. Because if, well, I've traveled, a, not just the US, but I've traveled to other countries, for example, Switzerland. And now, Switzerland's not a country renowned for being radical and left wing. It's a very conservative with a small C country. Um, but the Swiss public, some 20 or 30 years ago, had had enough of the drug problems on the street. They'd had enough of heroin users in the parks and needles being found in the children's playgrounds. So what they did is not have a massive crackdown where they went around arresting people for the possession of small amounts of drug. What they did was they started to deal with um, the heroin problem in particular as a public health crisis. And in doing so, they provided clinics and heroin assisted treatment programs where heroin users can go and take the heroin completely safely. And I visited these programs. And after people have been given safe pharmaceutical grade heroin in secure conditions where they have access to medical treatment and rehab, most of them go on their journey to work or to college, or to carry out their law-abiding lives as, as, as drug users, just as alcohol users, are entitled to do. And all that we're hearing from the government is yet more of the catastrophic mistakes that governments, particularly right-wing governments, but not exclusively right-wing governments, have been making for decade after decade after decade. We will waste billions of pounds making our drug problem worse and worse and worse. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, uh, as I say, uh, I'm not really taking a position on this, but except for after 50, more than half a century, 
it is quite palpably clear that the war on drugs, both sides of the Atlantic, in fact, all over the world, has 100% failed. So rather than just making the same mistake we've been making for half a century, uh, shouldn't Boris be thinking of a different approach? If he really wants to uh, sort our drug problem out, just saying I'm going to catch the dealers and I'm going to catch uh, middle class people with cocaine in their pocket, it's just not going to achieve anything. If you really want to get to grips with it, you've got to have some blue sky different thinking, haven't you? You have. And, and one of the chapters of my book is called Why We Should Legalise Drugs. And the truth of it is that the only solution to the problems of drugs in our society is to legalise, regulate and licence drug supply. So you, you would eradicate the criminal gangs. You create a safe environment for users, users who either do wish to continue taking drugs, but to do so safely without having to rob people or sell their bodies to get hold of drugs, as most drug users now have to do one of those activities. Uh, and, of course, causing utter misery to society as a result of those activities and, of course, destroying their own health and lives. So what you have to do is you just have to do something completely radical and different. You have to say, we know what doesn't work. And sadly, the government are pursuing exactly the policies that don't work and ask ourselves, look around the world at countries that have found solutions to these problems, have made their societies and their streets safer, have made the, uh, uh, the, the drug users health it helped improve and have reduced the, the huge level of overdose, which sadly in our country is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, just as it did in the United States as a result of the policies of Richard Nixon and his successors. So we just have to have a radical rethink. And much as members of the public and your listeners might be thinking, well, this just sounds like a free for all for everyone to take all the drugs they like. It's not. It's evidence based policy on how you reduce the harms from drugs how you reduce drug-related crime, and crucially for me, how you save lives. Because surely, ultimately, that's what it's about. Not about sound bites and, and saber rattling and nonsense from politicians just trying to get votes from, from the public on the basis of a pack of lies. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I, I mean I, I've probably got some sympathy with what you're saying, uh, um, Chris, but the main thing is, wh whatever any of us think, what we can utterly... Uh, say without con fear of contradiction is that everything everyone's done so far has not worked. It's that Einstein thing. The definition of madness is seeing something that doesn't work and repeating it time and time again. Well, that's what we're doing with the war on drugs. So whatever you think, whatever I think, surely just a different approach as opposed to this box standard approach that uh, Boris came up with last night dressed as a copper in uh, Liverpool on a drugs raid. It was just ridiculous uh, political theatre, wasn't it? It's a, it's a farcical publicity stunt. But the truth of it is, Kevin, that, that there are countries around the world which have done things, not just Switzerland with heroin treatment, but a number of other countries around the world which have taken a health base, a public health approach to drugs, because drugs are about health. They're not about crime and morality. Yeah, right. and, 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 you know, they're about improving the lives of our country and, and the people of our country. And for me, that should be the starting point. And we do see the small green shoots of new thinking in our country, in Glasgow and around the country, in programs which, which follow much of the positive examples that have been set by other countries, which have, which have adopted a much more practical, a much more pragmatic approach. And we're seeing little green shoots of that. But sadly, what we have here is rhetoric from the government and rhetoric from our Home Secretary and Prime Minister, which is taking us ever backwards, all the way back to that ridiculous nonsense from Nixon in 1971 and, and Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan about just yeah, saying Still home. going on, it's still going just on. Doesn't well, absolutely. It's time for some new thinking. I totally agree with you, Chris. Uh, great to talk to you. Thank you so much, uh, Chris Shaw, Chris Dorr, uh, QC barrister and author there.